Last September, director of the Raid films Gareth Evans said there would probably never be another entry in the series. This news was kind of devastating to someone who routinely talks about how much he loves The Raid 2 on his YouTube channel and just in his slash my everyday life. As much as I enjoyed his cult horror film Apostle, a mini review of which can be found in this video that uses a structure I will probably never replicate on this channel, and think that he has proved that he doesn't need to be locked into the action genre, I still want Evans and series star Iko Uweis to come together for another cinematic Sealot showcase. But whether that happens or not, fans still need that sweet, sweet Sealot fix. And that's where, actually, Indonesian director Timo Janto has come in. The Night Comes For Us hit Netflix last September, and though it is exactly my kind of movie, it wasn't inevitable that I would see it. Which is because Timo Janto, alongside Kimo Stambol, together known as the Mo Brothers, made one of the few films that I genuinely hate. 2014's Killers. Their previous film, 2009's Macabre, was kind of bland, and followed by a solo short from Janto in The ABCs of Death, an entirely unpleasant Ellis for libido, and then Janto had a joint effort in VHS 2 with none other than Gareth Evans himself for Safe Haven, which was easily the best part of the anthology. After Safe Haven, the two directors seem to have switched tracks. Janto's films became more action-oriented, while Evans ended up going full-on horror with Apostle. Killers, though, is a stain on both of their records. It is a genuinely mean film, one that takes glee in hurting innocent people because fuck you, that's why. And no. I am willing to accept pervasive, entirely unjustified cruelty from a film only if it is accompanied by unmatched talent. Something like Kim Ji Woon's I Saw the Devil, or perhaps Takashi Miike's Lesson of the Evil. The Mo brothers are no Kim or Mike. So I kind of put them out of mind. Even their decision to collaborate with Iko Uweis in 2016 with Headshot wasn't going to convince me to give them another look. But then it was late 2018, and Evans had said the raid was through, just as Janto was releasing another solo outing, this time starring Uweis and Joe Taslim, also from the raid. I realized much later that the pair of them had actually mentioned this movie to me when we spoke on the phone about Safe Haven all the way back in 2013. At the time, it was supposed to be Janto's next, and Evans would be the lead producer and part of the choreography team. Evans said, bare minimum, he was going to be helping out with those action beats. Obviously, things changed because... His name isn't in the credits. I watched a couple of Headshots' fight scenes on YouTube, and it's clearly a much less expensive movie, so it seems likely that the delay was financial and that by the time The Night Comes For Us had begun in earnest, Evans was off shooting Apostle and couldn't be there to produce it. But his influence is everywhere. Hello, by the way, and welcome to The Week I Review. You can call me a true believer in the power of handheld camera work, and today I am coming very late to the Night Comes For Us party. But first, more raid talk. What makes the raid's fight scenes stand out is their unique combination of intense shaky cam and total action clarity. It almost sounds oxymoronic since handheld camera work is so often a way to obscure action, but that's not what happens here. Shots are typically somewhere between a wide and a medium with the occasional close-up for maximum impact of the impact, but in all cases it's such that some wobble isn't going to get in the way of your ability to comprehend what's on screen. Because Evans is really good at this whole filmmaking thing. The wobble then becomes the tool it was meant for, to unsettle things and ratchet up tension and keep you on edge. Despite its reputation, shots in the raid aren't actually very long, but something dramatic happens in each one, so whether it's 10 seconds long or less than one, it matters. 
I would say that the editing is pretty workmanlike. Evans himself takes on the task, you know, not remarkable, but entirely serviceable. The reality is that were pretty much any competent editor given the same footage, the final result would look largely the same because they don't shoot coverage. They go from fight segment to fight segment, doing each part as many times as necessary until they get it right, which, speaking from experience, is exhilarating and a little nerve-wracking when you are relying on every move in a minute-long shot to land convincingly and don't have literal days to shoot the thing until it's perfect. And pretty much all of that applies to The Night Comes for us, though Janto's eye has never been as keen as Evans, who, again, I think is genuinely underrated as a not-action director. So the actual photographing of the fights is reminiscent of, but not nearly at the same level that he works at. That said, this is a huge step up from Headshot based on the fight scenes that I have since watched from that film. They were fine, but despite the on-screen talent, which is actually largely the same between the two movies, it was pretty clearly the work of someone still figuring things out. The Night Comes For Us is inevitably a more confident production and a more expensive one, and both show. Hell, even compared to the Raid films, Janto has turned up the intensity here to 11. The takes are longer, the camera shakier, and the blood flowier. On that last note, this movie is brutal in a way that is genuinely impressive considering how much of the gore is clearly practical. The logistics of some of those effects must have been a nightmare, but they pay off in the end. That said, it does occasionally feel like the movie is trying too hard. One moment that stuck out as laughable is in this moment right before the big two-on-one ladies-only fight where the white-haired killer walks over to a cross on the wall and then slowly turns it upside down. Like, come on. In a movie with a lot of literal beating people over the head, this metaphorical one feels particularly egregious. And in general, the treatment of the women fighters by the film isn't the best. Their fight is pretty awesome, though. And speaking of awesome fights, if there is one complaint that can be levied at the Raid 2's final confrontation, which is among my favorite one-on-ones ever, it's how one-sided it all is. Though Ika Uweis's Rama certainly takes some punishment, he is ahead of Sesip Rahman's assassin from the start and never really loses that momentum. It's not as egregious as, say, the last battle in the original John Wick where they briefly attempted to make it seem like this old man had even a glimmer of a chance against the Baba Yaga. But it is slightly too bad that you never really feel like Rama is in danger. At the start of Here the Night Comes for Us's equivalent, when Uweis and Taslim finally go head to head, it almost feels like they're going in that direction, except here the bad guy has the upper hand. So that can't be right. And indeed, it must even out over the, no joke, 12 minutes that the fight lasts. That is right, this battle is twice as long as the Raid 2's kitchen scene, and it is not padded to fill that time. They genuinely have 12 minutes of fight in them, and what it lacks in directorial polish, it makes up for in sheer intensity. Like, you get exhausted just watching the two of them go at it for half that long, let alone the entire thing. It's not the kind of fight you can watch over and over again the way I do many of this Raid series is best. But every time you see it, you can't help but think, wow. With this film, Janto has proven himself to be a more than capable action director, learning many of the right lessons from one of the best of our time alongside some truly top tier martial artists. He's not the most talented writer director more generally, but I am glad at bare minimum that someone has picked up the Sealot slack. 7.9 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, that's great. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to see more, I actually have another video coming in a couple of days. This is episode 39.2. Episode actual 40 is coming later this week because logistics, whatever. Don't worry about it. I hope to see you then.